Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and today a little bit of Overwatch news followed by some speculation about the next Overwatch event. It was called Uprising, we now know it's going to be called Archives thanks to an update on the PTR. In this video I'm going to quickly talk about the change that we can see and what I think that might mean for the upcoming event based on some other things that have been going on recently such as some new music popping up that might be something to do with the event on the Overwatch League broadcasts and some goings on on the PTR and how Watchpoint Gibraltar's final defensive spawn miraculously disappearing may be something to do with what content we'll see coming up in Archives. My speculation around putting these together is that we might see some new playable level or content like Uprising was last year, but something new, perhaps not an extension of the existing Uprising content. Well, in an unusual move, a Saturday PTR patch went live along with a dev diary on Jeff about the Avoid teammate feature that they're trialling on the PTR. However, I want to focus on a more subtle change. If you look at the Uprising skins and collectibles for last year, all of the unlocks, you will note that the name has changed from Uprising to Archives. Now, I don't think that's insignificant, and here's why. Recently, of course, we had the story update teaser blog talking about Torbjorn's letter to his wife after Operation White Dome. Now, that was introduced on the official Overwatch website as being the official law archive of Overwatch. This ever-evolving database will give you top-secret clearance to art, footage, and decrypted documents to discover the history of Overwatch, its enemies past and present, and the bios of your favourite heroes from both sides of the fray. Now, recently, of course, the law has been progressing maybe a little bit slowly in terms of comics and things compared to the pace of the first year and a half, year and three quarters or so of Overwatch's existence. And a lot of people in lots of different places, the official forums, Reddit, and other places have got a little bit frustrated by that. I've always thought that if something has gone a little bit quiet, it's probably because there's a bit of a calm before a storm. Now this changing of name, along with some other things to do with how people look into the files of the game, which I'm going to talk about in a second, makes me think that there's an aligning around making Uprising, the old event, into archives. And along with this archives, this story update blog that we've seen, it's focusing around this term of archives as being how Overwatch are going to tell their story, both outside of the game and inside of the game. Now, making the name of the event Archives also means that they can add different stories from any time in the past of Overwatch if they want to, and they could perhaps put in-game content with that too. And by that I mean playable content beyond the collectibles that you'll get in the loot box of a particular event. So what publicly visible right now makes me speculate that we might have some additional content, like an additional playable mission, like another Uprising, not just an extension to Uprising. So I'm going to summarise this in two ways, and time codes are in the description if you want to skip around this video, of course. The first First, I'm going to really quickly recap what Jeff has mentioned so far that makes me think we're going to get something bigger than just a tweak of a usual event. Well, we've had two kind of interesting things from Jeff this year. If you remember the Happy New Year dev update in that, Jeff made several comments about events, and here are some of them. He basically said that the next iteration of Uprising is going to return for people who want to play it. For example, we already have Brigitte's voice lines in the game, I just didn't include those in my video. Null Troopers here! So we'll get Uprising and the Uprising Multiple Heroes mode. But but um, we want to evolve it um, and we want to put more thought against what that event could be. Um, we have a lot of really big ideas and we think that's going to be a lot of fun for players as well. So from listening to that it sounds as though it's going to be a bigger and larger thing that they do for Uprising than a mere, say, extra map for Lucio Ball. Now, the other thing recently, of course, was that Jeff made a post saying about Reaper and his role in the game's story, and the team were excited to reveal more about his worldview and who he is as a person. We could well see that in a new lore event, for example, like maybe Archives coming up soon. So that's why something could be bigger, but what could be the biggest thing of all? What if this is the opening of the archives. So we have Uprising as an old archive, folder being brought out, an old mission. We have a new one this year. And then, who knows, maybe we'll get these on a more regular basis. And that could be one of these bigger, larger ideas that Jeff was talking about. Now, the reason I say this is because Blizzard last year, we're recruiting for people, for example, with experience on working with vehicles in terms of programming. They were recruiting for an Overwatch artist. There was some staffing up around the Overwatch team and the engine as well, as well as a new writer that of course has been hired for at Blizzard very, very recently. So as well as an unannounced project that is looking for, I think it was first person shooter and vehicle sort of working experience, so that kind of game, uh, of which the only engine that Blizzard have at the moment is Overwatch, of course and all of these other people staffing on the team, could we get these archive missions more often? Could this perhaps be the beginning of a new 
PvE mode that gets regularly updated with this kind of thing. Okay, so that's why I think it could be bigger than before and some new playable content, but what could it be about? Well, I think Talon or maybe Blackwatch is a very strong possibility. Now, reasons for this. It's been very, very much requested by everyone since the Uprising event last year. And also, on top of that Jeff comment, sounds as though that they'd like to talk about Reaper or Reyes sometime soon, which would be really, really good. Also to do with some of the things on the PTR as well, which I'll come to at the end of this. But next, the music. Well, the Overwatch League launched earlier this year, and we've seen loads of thrills and spills and awesome games and scrapes. But one thing you will have noticed is that the Overwatch League got its own musical theme. Now, very occasionally, the Overwatch League broadcasts, if you watch the esports on Twitch, do tend to drop in different bits of music. Now, they started playing very recently the Uprising theme from last year, the original one. But since the beginning of Season 2, they very occasionally dropped in this new piece of music, and this has actually been on the broadcast occasionally for the last few months. Have a listen, and tell me what it reminds you of. Now there's about two minutes of that, however, in that you can hear a very, very martial, kind of that choral bit at the beginning. That sounds very like Doomfist or Ominous to me, in kind of like musical tone perhaps. You then hear Widowmaker's Alive theme of course, but spun into a little different way. So I don't know about you, but to me that sounds quite talony in theme. Such cool music isn't really composed for no reason most of the time. The Overwatch League did get its own musical theme, but this is an interesting one and it's not been heard of. I can't find it in the game files so far. So could this be the music for Uprising 2.0 or indeed Overwatch Archives? So if we're going to get some new playable archives or Uprising content, maybe it's the foundation of a new PvE mode that we'll see more added to. And we have a, an idea that it might be something to do with Talon or perhaps Blackwatch due to that slightly mysterious music. There remains one more interesting thing that could be part of this. Now, a lot of people noticed that when this PTR patch went live, the Saturday just gone, that Watchpoint Gibraltar's final defensive spawn was missing. It's just completely not there, as you can see in this footage from the PTR. Now people have speculated why this is the case, and there are actually two potentially good reasons that you could add to the speculation as to why this being missing could be part of the event. Full credit to those people smarter than me who dig around in this kind of stuff who have explained it to me. Now how Overwatch handles its files and encrypts and conceals some of its content on the PTR before it's launched on the live service is a very complex thing that I, I'll be honest, don't fully understand. But the simplified explanation one as to why this spawn might be missing is that it's hidden behind a key. So when Overwatch loads stuff into a level into your game, think of it as walking up to a door with an identification badge or key and there's a security guard at the door and Overwatch says, I need to get through this door, I need to get the content behind that door. The security guard takes a look at the key and goes, yep, that's okay, and then lets Overwatch access Watchpoint Gibraltar's walls, its sky, different sound effects, and in this case, the spawn. However, if the Overwatch developers put some content into the game that they don't want the game to display or have accessible yet, then the key won't be there. So the Overwatch client will walk up to the door and say, I want to go in here, and then the security guard will say, nope, not allowed, and the content won't be served or loaded. So it could be the case that this is the PTR client trying to access some content that they haven't put the keys in game for. If they don't put the keys in game then that means that they're hiding content behind those keys that's to do with something to do with an upcoming event for example. Maybe this spawn could just be the effect of a missing key. Now the second thing that this could be, and again perhaps it's to do with it being content that's actually going to be seen in archives in some way or not, is that Overwatch's compiler, basically the program shall we say, it's not a great word, that sticks together everything to do with Overwatch before it's released as a version of the game, has something built in which is meant to scan and strip out assets that aren't actually meant to be in that particular release of the game, and this can be done on encryption basis, so basically to prevent assets that are in development from being put into a live build of the game. Now members of the dev team have talked about this at the Game Developers Conference recently this year amongst other things so this is publicly known information as you can see on this slide it says that there can be a lot of false positives so maybe this spawn is totally normal and it's just been deleted by accident but there is a chance that it could be somehow flagged as being in development content or content that's meant to be released later and if so what could this spawn be in an archives event? Well maybe it could be something like a texture for a new menu screen maybe a mission select screen or something like that that could be very exciting or perhaps it could be the background or part of the textures for maybe a whole new Watchpoint Gibraltar style 
uprising overwatch archive style lore event or level i really can't wait to find out what it's going to be there we go some hype for overwatch archives when it's coming what do you think of all these sort of little different nuggets of information and all of the speculation from it do let me know your thoughts what do you like to see for an overwatch archives mission cheers for tuning in i've been hammy take it easy